We've been talking with Jacqueline Otto of the National Rifle Association, and today I'd like to talk to you about the Institute for Legislative Action, which is the, for the, those of you that aren't aware, the NRA's political action group yes. that, that is out protecting our Second Amendment rights and working very heavily in the, in the upcoming elections. Um, where is the NRA right now in the ILA in terms of the 2012 presidential election? Yeah, well, we're very involved, and we've got uh, people all over the country working on races from the presidential election down to some state and local elections. And um, one of the, the best things that I can recommend is that uh, if you go to our website over on the, the right-hand side, there's a tab that says Get Involved Locally, and that's a great resource for people to find what the NRA has going on around them. There's opportunities to volunteer at some campaign field offices that we've got going up around the country. Uh, there's more opening all the time. Um, we've got election volunteer coordinators around the country in different uh, states and cities that help that need help with the uh, campaign material, with the flyers, with the yard signs, and we're always looking for people to help volunteer. And then uh, it also helps you find out where your polling place is and where where to, and how to get registered to vote where you live, which is always important because we want to make sure that everyone, uh, especially the people who are passionate about Second Amendment rights issues, um, are registered to vote and know where they're supposed to be voting on November 6th. Now, President Obama received an F rating from the NRA back in the 2008 election. Has he done any better since then? Absolutely not. In fact, um, we're very concerned with, with the, the actions that President Obama has taken in the last four years, and it's vitally important for the Second Amendment uh, and for all of our rights that he not get reelected and get more opportunity to erode the Second Amendment. You know, the, the gun control crowd has been complaining that he hasn't done enough, right. hasn't done anything. Well, we think he's done way too much. And um, one of the things in particular, probably the most obvious thing, the most long-lasting thing that he's done is made two nominations to the Supreme Court, two very anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment nominations to the Supreme Court. and. Um, you know, we need to keep in mind that the, the two landmark cases that came out um, in recent years, Heller versus the District of Columbia and McDonald versus the City of Chicago, which overturned those localities' gun bans and affirmed the individual right to keep and bear arms, those were both 5-4 decisions. And if President Obama gets an opportunity to, to nominate, uh, to appoint another justice or two or three, um, some of the justices who were in the minority before, like Justice Ginsburg, have already voiced their desire to overturn those rulings. And you know, if he gets those opportunities to nominate, he absolutely will nominate anti-Second Amendment justices, and those rulings will be in peril. And so that 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 means that the the Second Amendment isn't just in threat the next four years under President Obama. We're talking about the life of the Second Amendment. We're talking about the future going forward with the Second Amendment because those justices serve for life. Yeah, there's still members of the Supreme Court that were appointed by the first President Bush and even right. President Reagan. Right. So it's um, it's a very powerful uh, a powerful policy that the president can implement his own political agenda for generations. For generations, into the absolutely. Now. Not only is the presidential race important because of the power of appointing the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. but should President Obama be reelected, we also need to make sure that we have control in the Senate where we could block potential anti gun Absolutely, because uh, the president would, would appoint these people, but then it's the Senate that confirms them. And so we're very involved with a lot of Senate races across the country, in particular uh, in Ohio, um, where uh, the current incumbent senator, uh, Senator Brown, is F-rated by the NRA, and we're working hard to replace him with the A-rated and endorsed uh, Josh Mandel in Ohio. So we have a lot of uh, campaign field offices and a lot of volunteer opportunities for people in Ohio to get involved and help work towards um, electing a pro-Second Amendment senator in Ohio. And I, I saw the most recent polls in that race showed that that Mr. Mandel is in a dead heap with Mr. Brown, so it, it's an opportunity for people to get out and every mm -hmm. vote will count. Ohio is going to be a very important state, not only in, in the presidential election, but in, the, in changing the balance of power. That would absolutely be a game changer in the Senate, yeah. So um, 
where can people find out more information about how to get involved in this campaign? Yeah, go to uh, the NRA ILA's website, so it's NRAILA.org, that stands for the Institute for Legislative Action, and on the right-hand side of the page there's tabs for getting involved locally. Um, and Or they can find uh, phone numbers on there mm -hmm. to call grassroots department at the NRA ILA and find information about where they can volunteer. Great, and we'll make sure that information is available on our website as well. One of the issues that the Obama administration is using, or one of the tools they're using to circumvent the Second Amendment is by trying to go through the United Nations and create a treaty. And of course, for those that aren't aware, when a treaty is passed, signed by the President and confirmed by the Senate, mm -hmm. it becomes the law of the land with the same power and force as the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So, where are we now on the UN gun arms control treaty? Yes, well fortunately, um, this last summer, the UN conference on the arms trade treaty failed to complete a draft for the, the arms trade treaty, uh, which is a good thing. You know, there was uh, the draft language that they were working on made no accommodation for the Second Amendment, made no recognition for individual uh, ownership of firearms for self-defense or any other reason, and uh, made uh, was planning on implementing regulatory schemes and, and tracking schemes that would have affected the price and the ability of people to access you know, legally, legally purchasable firearms. Mm -hmm. And um, so we spent a long time this summer, um, Wayne LaPierre of the NRA was at the UN almost all of July, working to, work as the only non-government organization actually there defending and speaking up for the Second Amendment. Um, and uh, fortunately they failed this time, but you have to remember that this isn't a new thing. They've been working on this for almost two decades, and we've been fighting it for almost two decades. And we're, we don't think that this is the end. We're, you know, they've, this is something that's on their agenda, and they absolutely will be bringing it up again. And if they bring it up in the next four years, President Barack Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton have both voiced their support for this, and um, we don't want to put them in a position where that they have anything to sign. Well, the Democrats have never been able to win the battle of ideas on the Second Amendment. Clearly, the American people stand behind the Second Amendment and protect that as a cherished right for all Americans to be able to, to carry firearms. But we know that, the, that well, they I won't wanna, stop with that. I want to make a point that it's not all Democrats. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of members and a lot of supporters, and we, we will even uh, endorse candidates, regardless of party, based on their position on the Second Amendment. Absolutely. I'll, I'll accept that. Okay. Okay. But we also know that the Democrats, as a strategy, will will use the court system and use other. Mm -hmm. Even this this president will just make up law on his own mm -hmm. if he doesn't like what the Congress is doing or, or can't get it done any other way. So that's why it's very important in this election that everyone really get out and vote. Absolutely. And um, just things to keep in mind when you're thinking about voting is you want to make sure that you are properly registered to vote if you've moved. Recently, maybe check your registration if you have uh, friends or family members, uh, maybe adult children who aren't registered to vote, make sure to talk to them, do what you can to help get them registered, and maybe talk to your friends and neighbors and organize carpools or something to make sure that everyone turns out on November 6th. Now, in Texas, I have a concealed carry license. Mm -hmm. It allows me to carry a weapon for personal protection anywhere in the state of Texas. It also has reciprocity in about 26 other states around the right. country. Washington, D.C. is not one of those areas where Absolutely I can. Absolutely not. <laughs> and uh, your great state of Virginia is one. Mm -hmm. But um, where are we in terms of getting national reciprocity on, on concealed weapons licensing? If I, I have a driver's license in Texas, and when mm -hmm. I come to Washington, D.C., I don't have to get a new driver's license, why can't we get the interstate recognition of concealed carrying licenses? Yeah, that's something that we have been very involved in, and there's been uh, numerous attempts to get legislation to that effect through Congress, um, none of which has been successful so far. Um, but many candidates this election cycle have voiced their support for it. Um, many people that we're supporting that are incumbents have supported it or co-sponsored um, that kind of legislation. And absolutely, it is important because uh, there's countless cases where people, when they leave their house that morning, they don't may not necessarily know if they're going to be crossing state lines. Something may come up. I personally live near the border of, of two other states. And you know, I, it, things come up, and, and those people are not criminals because they were um, 
exercising their Second Amendment rights when they left the House that morning. And, and we think that this legislation is significant and important because you know, crime doesn't stop at state lines and self-defense shouldn't either. Well, I know you have a, a board meeting of the NRA going on this week. Things are very hectic. We appreciate you taking the time to drive Absolutely. into the city to talk to us. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to the readers of Texas GOP vote in relation to Second absolutely. Well, we absolutely appreciate all of the help that we've gotten. We want to make sure that everyone who's interested can get involved. Um, you can call, and the numbers will be provided. You can go online, check in your membership. If you uh, are not a member of the NRA, we absolutely encourage people to join the NRA. Uh, if you think maybe your membership has lapsed, maybe you can go and, and uh, renew your membership. Um, it's you know, we are the largest organization working to defend Second Amendment rights and uh, absolutely need as many resources as possible to do so. Well, even though President Obama was nominated as the gun salesman of the year in 2010, uh, we certainly want to make some change in here and, and we appreciate the efforts of the, of the NRA in helping uh, change the course of this coming election. Thank you. Well, we appreciate all your efforts as well. Thank you.